So we've made our way over to kind of the art gallery. We couldn't really get inside. <laughs> we were shunned. <laughs> but um, I'm standing here with Darren Hendler. Hi. Hi, I'm Darren. <laughs> um, so your current title is quite the mouthful. I'm going to put it all together. Digital or Director of Digital Humans at Digital Domain. That's right, yep. I love it. Uh, what does that mean? Well, we're still trying to figure out exactly what that means. But basically, that's trying to figure out and build technology around building digital humans for features, for commercials, for VR, real time, and just all aspects to how face looks, how face moves, how skin renders, and everything to do with how do we create a realistic looking digital human. Wow. So that sounds like quite a lot, all encompassed into one. Yes. <laughs> how, did you, how do you manage your time? What does your day to day look like, depending on the project you're working on, I guess? Well, I mean, we have a whole team of people that are dedicated to different areas. We have teams of software engineers, and teams of artists and things working on this problem. And it's really just lots of meetings with people, lots of research, looking at what other people are doing, research that's out there, and just you know, brainstorming really cool new ideas of new ways of doing things we haven't thought about yet. That's great. Uh, what is a, a good example of a project that's already come out that that exemplifies what it is that you're doing? Well, there's, you can see there are many different projects at the moment that have digital humans in some form. And in fact, most of the time, you wouldn't even know when you're seeing digital humans. There's some times when everyone's aware and it's obvious that it's yeah. a digital creature or a digital human. Yeah, yeah. But so many of the shows that we see have some form of stunt doubles or even very hero face replacements where oh, cool. you know, the actor couldn't perform the scenes and a digital character was made or sometimes when the actor wasn't there and they created new scenes for them. So. Yeah. You know, there's so many movies out there with scenes that no one even knows are digital. No kidding. So, can you call out one or two? Uh, not some of the stuff that we've worked no, on. Unfortunately, worked on. so it. much of the work that we do, you know, we can't even talk about because ah. we're not allowed to say when we created the actor and they weren't really there, or yeah. when a stunt person did the performance, or for a variety of different reasons. That's very fascinating. And the work you're doing is, is so on point and realistic that people would never know, and that's the point. We, we hope. That's yeah. not always the case, and yeah. sometimes people can tell. And you yeah. know, sometimes if you watch it over and over again, you can tell. And sometimes yeah. you see digital humans that fall completely flat and yeah. are unnerving or eerie and don't look right. And that's that is the thing we're really trying to avoid. Okay. And what segued you into that realm? I know you were working more in creature work before. And I do. I still do lots of creature work. And in fact, some of this technology applies to our creature work because we do a lot of work where we take. Um, an actor, an actor's facial and body performance, and then take that and directly transfer that onto a creature, mm. using the same kinds of technology. But I think the thing that interests me the most on this is that, you know, in visual effects, so many things have been figured out. There's yeah. so many things that were hard that have been solved, and explosions, simulations. Yeah. I mean, it's still getting better and better all the time, but digital humans and digital creatures and realistic humans and creatures, that's still something that hasn't been figured out that well yet. You see it every now and again, but and we haven't seen like long scenes of artificial characters talking that you can't tell aren't real. So there's so many challenges and things that haven't been figured out yeah. that to me are the most exciting part of visual effects. Oh, totally. And why do you think it is that it hasn't been figured out yet? If Because it's hard. It's it is hard. really yeah. hard. Like each and every one of us is so attuned to human faces and human performance. And when something's just slightly wrong, eyelashes are wrong, eyebrows are wrong, twitches in the face are wrong, the way the face moves is wrong, suddenly you feel unnerved by it. It's, mm -hmm called the uncanny valley where you something looks human but yeah. doesn't move quite right and it sort of creates this guttural response in us that uh, we, feel, we feel unnerved by it oh and disturbed goodness. by it and so the trick is really to come out on the other side of that to really create something that's so real that no one can really tell wow. and there are so many things that you have to get right if one single thing is not right then people can tell it's not real yeah. it looks kind of wrong it looks eerie yeah that's very fascinating the uncanny valley i like that um, so who who are you working with mostly on this what types of artists i imagine it's kind of all across the board but it's all across the world we work with um, a lot of software a lot of software engineers and things as well as we work with riggers rigging tds we work with um, face shape modelers face shape experts we work with people um, texture artists and different modelers and just a whole range of different people because yeah. you think about everything that has come together to make a human face it requires people from every single one of those different teams. Yeah. Uh, and then when you're talking about taking these human mannerisms and putting them into a creature and you're having to make an unrealistic creature look realistic what types of challenges present themselves there that's well, that seems hard. <laughs> that is really hard and that's something we do a lot of work on where we take an actor and we capture their face yeah. and we analyze exactly how their face is moving. Often we do like we track thousands and thousands of points in their face. Yeah. And we look at their face and we 
figure out their facial anatomy mm -hmm. and then we look at our creature, we look at our creature's facial anatomy mm -hmm. and we transfer all of those moving points while looking at the anatomy from our actor onto our creature and hopefully have something then that moves kind of like the actor but it's still yeah. hitting the shapes that look real for the creature and are moving in a way that you'd expect the creature to. That's extremely fascinating. What types of software are you working with? Well, we, we work with um, a lot of the same software that everyone else does. You know, we use um, a lot of Maya, we use a lot of ZBrush, Mudbox, we use Mari, we use, um, and then we also use a lot of our own custom software, right? There's a lot of, you know, rigging tools, rigging systems, software, facial tracking software that is custom that we've created ourselves to yeah. do some of this work as well. Oh, man. That, is, that is really, really cool. So when you need a, I'm always curious to know how proprietary software kind of comes to be. Is it when you as the artist need something and, or it, you know, how, how does that happen? Well, it generally happens when we're trying to do something that the software really just can't do. So, you know, we can build a face and we can build all the textures and the displacements for a face and things like that in Maya and build a face rig. But yeah. when we now want to capture somebody else's face and transfer it, yeah. well, that there's not really, there's some software, but not yeah. really the software we need to do that. Yeah. So that's when we start to build our own and develop our own piece of software. But I imagine very soon that kind of software will be available to everybody in some package. I mean, Everything that we're doing now, you know, three, four, five years from now, will be available to every student or every person at home that yeah. wants to do this, which is yeah. really amazing. Very amazing. Um, to think about for artists who might want to, you know, get into this realm, what do you look for for the people you're working from, from their skill level and ability? Jody, well, and this is one of the really amazing things with how technology and software has changed. Like we see so many artists and even students at home that can create you know, single frame realistic photoreal renderings of a face. Mm -hmm. right? And that's kind of what we look at. We look for somebody that's taken a face and often it's their own face and yeah. they've recreated and looks in a single frame photoreal and indistinguishable. Yeah. And so that is possible. Now, the things that are not quite so possible at the moment for an artist on their own is to be able to get all of the motion right, to get that realistic human facial Got motion. It. Right? But so many people are already creating very realistic work at home. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Darren. I, this is really interesting, and I can't wait to see how it advances. Yeah, it's super exciting. I mean, yeah. this whole field, and it really is one of those hardest problems that are out there at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can see why, for sure. We're CG right now. You don't know that. <laughs> I wish. Have a great rest of your cigarette. You too. Thank you.